Hello everyone, this is Balu. Welcome to my channel, Civil Cave. Thank you for supporting my channel. We have achieved 1K subscribers today. And also I feel that it is the initial stepping stone in my journey and also lot more achievements to go. Okay, thank you all. And let's get into the video. In this video, I'm going to discuss about load transfer mechanism of a eccentric bolted group. First of all, I will introduce the concept. See here, clearly this is the whatever the former arrangement of pile cap here this is the piles which are supported and on these piles these are is the arrangement like these are the level 1 beams level 2 beams thereby these are the vertical shutter panels which are supported by the turn buckles for the lateral stability of these shutter panels when you pour this concrete into this form work and there is a exertion of lateral pressure across these vertical panels so that to support that whatever the panel surrounded by the concrete these turnbuckles are provided from that uh, whatever the vertical panels the load is transferred to these turnbuckles thereby this whatever the cross beams and from those cross beams finally it is going to reach to the tool thereby this bracket arrangement so here this all entire former arrangement is loaded and also it is supported on this whatever the bracket provided of course these brackets are provided at each and every pile so now what is the concept is whenever this entire arrangement load is going to transfer to this bracket it should be welder or whatever it may be bolted to this pile this pile also may be the steel pile liner and also it may be the concrete pile it is joined to this whatever the bracket so we have to design this particular bracket for this tonnage after the whole concrete is poured and also it you know that it will be cured for 28 days or it may be any other duration after that whole arrangement is going to be removed until then whatever the total load the entire self weight of this pile cap is going to be acted on this bracket so we have to design for that particular tonnage of the pile cap here also you can see the other arrangement which is uh, nothing but the pile cap construction form work but it is under water so whenever this uh, whatever the pile cap is going to construct there are different types of constructions will be going on it may be with concrete piles they are going to construct and also the other different type of construction is for example you can construct this as a steel pile liner that is all steel pile liners are used sometimes it may be of 50 meters and also more than 50 meters also will be there and this entire pile liner is going to be driven into the soil and whatever the surrounded soil around this pile liner it is acts as a stiffness and which provides a lateral stability to the pile liner and above 2 to 3 meters it may be it is filled with the concrete and remaining portion is entirely which is filled with the soil it, which provides a lateral stability to the pile liner and thereby the pile cap is going to be constructed which is of concrete and this is the composite structure in which this is the steel pile liner and this is the concrete pile cap so this whatever the form work is going to be supported entirely on this bracket connection see if you consider this is a pile liner and this is the bracket and the load is going to be act as a point load at an eccentricity of V and this particular bracket is going to be connected to this pile liner through the welding or it may be connected with the bolt group but most of the cases it is connected with the welding in particularly in this pile cap structures so it may be connected in the form of bolted group in the other form of structures so it may be of different connections so our main aim is to analyze such force into the bolted group what is the force which is going to be transferred from this point load to the bolt group for each and every bolt and how this load is going to be transferred from the this particular load to the bolts and this is the concept i am going to explain today and if you like my content please subscribe my channel and also hit on the like button and please watch the video till the end and you are going to learn something new definitely okay let us consider an example here you can see this is a 
I section in which a bracket is connected to this I section by this uh, whatever the bolted connections and the load of intensity P is acting at an eccentricity E and the question is how this load is going to transfer into these bolts and you can see this is a 3D isometric view this is the bracket plate and this is the column flange and now let us see how this load is going to transfer. Here you if you observe carefully this is a load of intensity P and which is acting at an eccentricity E and I am just converting whatever this condition to the combination of other two conditions. Here I am applying equal and opposite force at the centroid of the bolted connection. For example if you see this is the load P here also load P and this is a load P and I am just adding whatever the load of intensity P at the centroid of the bolted group from the top and also from the bottom. This is already there which is existing load P and if you combine these both conditions you are going to absolutely get the initial condition only. For the simplicity I am just converting whatever the loads in this manner see and if you observe carefully these are the two forces which are acting at an distance that is nothing but E is the lever arm of these forces and you can convert this equal and opposite forces combination into a couple. Just observe carefully. This is a very simple condition and there is an already a load which is act existing that is a P and if you convert this condition finally you are going to get a shear force which is acting at the centroid of the bolted group connection and also along with this shear force there is a torque which is going to be existing. Now let us consider these two forces and let us solve into the problem. And this is a torque that is of intensity P into E. And also this is the shear force which is going to be transferred to the bolted group. And these are the two major forces which is going to be act in this bolted group connection. Now whatever the torque which is going to act on this bolted group connection can I convert this torque in this manner if you observe carefully this is the F2 for example and whatever the shear which is going to act that is nothing but F1 in this bolt this is the farther most bolt you can consider for example this is B1 bolt and this B1 bolt is at a maximum distance from the centroid of the bolted group. So whatever the force which is going to act on these bolts, this force is going to be maximum at the edge most bolt that is B1. After derivation you came to know the clarity regarding this. First of all, whatever I am going to tell just please listen carefully and this is for example R1 is a radial distance from the centroid of the bolted group to this farther most bolt and F1 is nothing but the shear force which is going to be act on this bolt and from the torque F2 is the force which is going to be generated. I am just transforming this torque to the whatever the couple which is going to be transferred into the bolted group that is you can see this is the equal and opposite forces of intensity F2. At an acting at a distance of lever arm that is 2 R1. So this will generate a torque in the bolted group and similarly you can consider the pair of bolts in which it is going to resist whatever the torque is going to act. Now you have to understand why I am telling this as torque because whenever the moment which is going to act on this whatever the bracket the entire bracket is going to rotate in this manner. Wherever the possibility of rotation is there, we can call it as torque or torsional moment. And whenever, for example, if you, when you are washing the cloths, when you are going to twist with your both the hands and whatever the cloths is going to twist, that is nothing but twisting moment. And whenever if you consider a beam which is fixed at one end and you are going to apply the load at the end which is nothing but cantilever beam and this beam is going to bend in this manner. 
and this is nothing but bending moments because there is no possibility of rotation of this beam there is only a bending is possible that is nothing but bending moment we can call it and when there is a possibility of rotation we can call it as torque or torsional moment and if there is a distortion in the fibers of the whatever the beam or any component we can call it as twisting moment now let us resolve whatever the forces into each and every bolt now i am going to consider for example this is a bolt and the force which is going to transfer from whatever the shear you can consider that is a p is the intensity of the shear and each bolt is going to resist whatever the shear is nothing but for example here there are six number of bolts and if you convert these six number of bolts each bolt is going to resist that is p by 6 f1 is nothing but p by 6 each and every bolt is going to resist p by 6 shear force and next thing that is f2 let us uh, calculate this f2 also in place of 6 we can keep that is number of bolts that is p by n this is the intensity or the magnitude of the shear force which is going to be transferred to each and every bolt now let us solve whatever the f2 this is f2 and this is a f2 magnitude this f2 is directly proportional to the radial distance of the bolt from the centroid of the bolted group connection this is a cg and this is a r1 distance so here f2 is directly proportional to r now if you remove the proportionality symbol you can get the constant f2 is nothing but k into r so you can write k is nothing but f2 by r now here torque is nothing but force into perpendicular distance that is f2 into r you can consider this r as r1 also but generally i am writing as r here f2 is nothing but k into r you can substitute here k into r into r which will give k into r square now you can write this torque is nothing but summation of k into r square here k is a constant so you can take out the constant from outside k into summation of r square so whatever the torque which is going to act this total torque is going to be equal to the summation of the radial distances from the cg to the bolt for example these two bolts are there this r1 is a distance and these two bolts are the, is there this is the r2 is a distance summation of r square in this case is nothing but r1 square plus r2 square is going to be the summation of r square and k is a constant so if you multiply this you are going to get the whatever the torsional moment value now k is nothing but f2 by r i already written here so here f2 by r into summation of r square now torque which is nothing but torsional moment we already know the intensity that is p into e is equal to f2 by r into summation of r square so if you consider this one you can get the value of f2 that is nothing but p into e into r by summation of r square this is the generalized formula in which the value of the f2 that is nothing but torsional moments which in which it is converted to the force into the bolt that value you can get this formula so now you have the values of f1 and also f2 you have to find the resultant of this f1 and f2 for example here you can know the whatever the f1 is going to act this is in this direction and this is the angle theta in between the f1 and also f2 and coming to the resultant force that is nothing but summation of f1 square plus f2 square plus 2 f1 into f2 into cos theta this is nothing but the resultant force which is going to be act on the single bolt for this force you have to design such bolt now what are the checks you are going to consider in this bolt group whenever you are going to check the whatever the bolted group 
the major checks you are going to do is bearing and next thing is shear and other thing is tension this was the major checks now considering this eccentric bolted connection what are the checks you are going to do is there any tension is going to act in this bolted group no there is no tension is there any shear is going to act on this bolted group yes shear is there and also do you have to check for bearing yes you have to check for the bearing because whenever the shear is going to act on this bolted group and you have to whatever the surrounding bolted periphery is going to bear so for that you have to check for the bearing and whatever the connection which i have considered this is nothing but in plane eccentric connection that means whatever the this is a column and also this is a bracket and here the load is going to act these are the bolts so whatever the load which is going to act and also whatever the bolts which are connected both are in single plane see these bolts and also the load are both in single plane so i can call it as eccentric in plane connection for example if the load and also whatever the bolts which are connected are in different planes then it is called as eccentric out of plane connection and also here connected with the bolts so it is a bolted connection in other cases in the application part i have said it may be welded also so for that welded connection how this force is going to transfer just think and analyze yourself and also in the upcoming videos i am going to explain the whatever the how this force is going to transfer in the eccentric out of plane connections in case of bolts and also eccentric in plane connection in case of welds and also eccentric out of plane connection in the welds i'm going to cover in the upcoming videos and if you like my video please like the video and also if you like my content please subscribe my channel thank you for watching this video